Oh, yeah, I th we'll just see how this one goes, actually, John. It's, uh, the battery's a bit picky on that. Hello. Okay. Right, we'll, we'll get into it, eh? I'll speak class. Um, well, so what, we, so what we've covered so far is putting, you know, the general, um, what content you need in a business plan. Or... Firstly, we've started with a budget. Um, have you actually had a look at that budget I've put in there? You have? Yeah. Yep. Dan, have you had a look at that? The spreadsheet. The spreadsheet? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's cool. Good. Okay, so that, that's probably where you want to start, obviously, to make sure it stacks up. Uh, and then you go from there. Um, and then um, we've talked about the business plan and sort of how you, how you present that and looking at it over five years. So what today we're just going to talk about is um, putting something together to show the bank, which obviously incorporates the cash flow or the budgets that you've been doing and, and the business plan. Um, but what I thought I'd just start with, um, and obviously my background is banking, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll be sort of talking a lot, a lot, well we're using the notes as a guide, but I'm talking a lot, a lot off the top of my head as well, or just with my experiences. Um, but what do you think? What, I mean, this might, might be simple to you, um, but to some people, it, it, you know, they look at banks as being quite complex. But what, what do you think, basically, a bank is? What, 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 what does a bank need? Collateral. Money. Yeah, it needs money. Masters. Yep. And what does it need to do with that money? Make a profit. Leave it out, doesn't it? So all, all banks are really simply are intermediaries. Um, between the investors, people that are depositing, and uh, the people that need to borrow money. So the people that have got lots of money to invest, to the people that are capital, um, or capital east, or capital start or need money. Okay, so all the bankers are mar is is basically a, a margin trader. So it borrows or invests some money and gets some money from, you know, granny down the street or something like that. Um, it pays them four percent, and then it lends it out to to you to you guys for your project at six or seven percent. So all they're doing is making a margin. Um, why do you think? But but based on that, they've got a lot of intellectual capital in terms of they've lent to businesses for you know hundreds of years, or and, and they understand banking, so or they understand businesses, so they understand risk. So what what would be the disadvantage? Well, why don't you just go directly to you know, um, Uncle Joe down the road just borrowed his money um, and get it at four or four, four percent or, or cheaper. What what would be the disadvantage of just borrowing directly off somebody, off an investor or a depositor? That's not an investor or depositor. Or what would be the disadvantage of borrowing just straight off, not going through the bank and just borrowing off a depositor? <coughs> well, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'll just. I guess yeah. it's a rhetorical question a wee bit, but I mean, all, all banks are doing is they're getting lot, lots. You know, somebody might have ten thousand here. Somebody might have uh, two million to invest here. Somebody might have a hundred thousand here. Okay, so they're putting it into the bank, depositing, getting a return. You're coming along. You want to borrow two hundred thousand, or whatever, five hundred thousand, whatever. Well, obviously, this investor here hasn't got that, that much. Uh, this one here has only got half of it. So you'd be talking to two or three people. It'd be hard to find those people uh, exactly. The second thing is um, what would be difficult if you borrowed straight off these depositors would be, um, you know, they might lend you, uh, lend you that money today, but um, suddenly in a year's time they might have a family um, crisis or something like that, and they need, need that money back. So you'd have to go and refind find it again. So... So really, just simply, banks are just a margin chain, chain or intermediaries is, is probably the correct term to use between the depositor and the borrower. And, and with their expertise and intellectual um, 
intellectual property in terms of their experience of lending to businesses, they know what's good risks and what what are what are what are bad risks. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's why we have banks, and they're obviously a necessary a necessary uh, part of the economy. And uh, Western countries, in particular New Zealand, are, you know, we love borrowing money as well. So, uh, you know, we need them. So banks not only get their money from from depositors, it's forms quite a large part of their or their book, but they also borrow offshore as well in large large amounts. And after the global financial crisis, which is that GFC is that acronym that they they're all using, um, banks suddenly had to you know suddenly they, the the money to get offshore because obviously there's when they're borrowing money here uh, or deposits they're repaying it as well, so they've got to you know manage the cash flow or the money within within the bank. So when the GFC hit, suddenly the offshore side of things, um, it just money wasn't available or was there at a very high cost. So the banks really focused on um, getting deposits, um, you know, uh, turn deposits off, off New Zealanders, I suppose, or residents here, so to just to balance up their book with it. But they borrowed between that and offshore as well, and large corporates that at certain times of the year have quite a bit of money, you know, that that's the 90 day bills and all that sort of stuff there that they borrow there. But I mean, it's just a bit of a simple 101 on, on banking and it, it's just to, to always keep that in, in mind that, um, you know, they are intermediaries of money, they're margin traders. Um, <coughs> and banking used to be, they used to have the rule that it was a, um, a four, four, ten, three rule, okay? And that was um, borrowed at four percent, lend it out at ten percent, and be on the golf course at three. So um, yeah, it was you know back um, you know people tell you that probably in your generation, Julian, more so than these other guys um, and John. But you know people would go sort of cap in hand to the bank because there was it was there was a real shortage of money out there. So you had to be on your you know go and see the bank manager. Whereas now. Uh, with, on bend and knee basically, whereas now you know, banks are, are, are out there actively trying to get your business. So as much as you need a bank, they need you as well because that's how they make their profit, by just the, the margin between what they lend at and, and uh, what they borrow that money off the investors for. That's just a bit of a simple introduction. But. Okay, so rural financing. So what we're going to cover today is what does a bank yeah, look for when it's making it's deciding to um, lend your money, so it's really deciding if it wants to invest with you and be your um, f uh, be your partner in your business. But the thing with the bank is that they uh, they're not like a, an equity partner where that they share you know you share the profit at the end of each year. Um, they require a, a set return each month, uh, so there's, uh, there's nothing you know it's not negotiable there. So. So yeah, so what we're going to cover is what they look for when they're making a lending decision, and what information uh, would they want from someone who obviously who's applying for a loan. So yeah, so that's what we're going to cover today, and then we'll do a little bit more spreadsheet work and stuff like that as well. But we'll cover off with that, and just sort of I can answer any questions you've got on the budget and the cash flows that you've been using. Okay, so there's, there's four basic criteria that banks uh, look for when they're lending dollars. And it's obviously the people that they're lending to, so sound character. Um, cash flow, and that's, I guess, would be the most important. So that's, uh, basically it's got to pay, pay for its, you know, you've got to be able to pay the, pay the loan back. And um, I always remember when I first started for one university holidays, um, I met this old fella and he said, old farmer, wise old farmer, and he said, yeah, Sonny, it's, uh, it's um, easy to borrow the money, but the, um, the hardest thing is paying it back. So banks, particularly, and more, more so now, look at, make sure that it, that it is viable and stacks up. So that, that's, that's probably the most important. Um, obviously, they're looking at the proposal that you're putting up and, and the property. Um, I guess the proposal is, well, you know, they're not going to lend to something that's illegal or something like that, um, and what sort of industry that they're in. Um, I'd have to say, you know, the vin viticulture is pretty good, but some industries, some fairly high-risk horticultural operations or businesses, banks are, 
probably shy quite um, shy away from a bit. And they don't necessarily say that they don't win to them, but they make the criteria so tough that, that it's pretty much impossible to borrow that money. And then obviously the, um, is security. And that's really what, uh, if, if, if the business doesn't, if it fails, what's the bank got to, uh, um, to sell or to get its money back? Um, the other thing that we look at is, um, you could say it's that for four criteria. Another one that I use probably more is the three C's which is character, capability, probably in the way there, and collateral. Okay, so possibly the first thing they look at is a capability, well does it stack up? Um, and secondly if, um, and then they look at the character, well no, they'd probably look at the collateral and, and um, Seeing if uh, if it didn't if it didn't work, what they'd have to sell, and thirdly, they'd look at the well character. I mean, is very important, and probably what 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 banks are looking for more so, obviously, is your experience, um, your qualifications. So, what you're doing here will, will, will sort of help helps the cause as well. But they're also sort of trying to assess. Um, you know, when you are banking, you sort of got to make decisions pretty quickly. But they're also trying to assess. Well, what's this guy going to be like, or girl? Lady going to be like if, if things don't work out? Is he going to, you know, will he be proactive and, you know, selling an asset or doing something to make to return the business to um, a viable proposition or, or not? So, you know, simply, you know, what 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 are they going to be like if they get backed into a corner? Are they going to sort of blame everyone else or are they going to take uh, ownership and, and responsibility and, and work it out themselves before they sort of have to come to the bank and say, can you help me? So it's those sort of um, judgments that the bank's making. Okay, so personal factor. Yep. Yeah, so who are the decision makers? Um, if you're a husband and wife partnership, or which in a lot of businesses they are, um, you know, do they make jointly make decisions? I guess in my experience, I've found... Um, yeah, horticulture is it's probably um, how would I say it? Um, yeah, a lot of the vineyards and in, in, in experience that I've had with lending is that they're um, a lot of them don't require a lot of borrowings because it's a bit of a passion that they have and they're fairly capital uh, rich, so they they don't have a lot of borrowings and it's sort of normally yeah it's it's a bit of a dream for them. But then when you're dealing with the corporates, well that that's a whole different sort of uh, ball game as well but yeah what sort of governance structures etc that they've got in there um, do they use consultants um, and that's important from the management side it is but um, you know what a bank is really looking for is that well hey is this guy has he gone to his accountant and got got his accountant to uh, do a budget or has he actually uh, actually taking the time himself to put something together and, and I guess from a banker's point of view we'd look more favourably at, um, at if, if that person himself has put together put together the budget um, which sort of ties in with that financial ability um, do they understand um, where their business is and, and where it's going and uh, are they able to monitor and, and give up to date reports on where they are compared to budget because budgets change we all know that so it's a matter of just Keeping an eye on things and um, and knowing in advance when you might need more more finance or whatever. Um, your qualifications, as I said, is very important. Um, yeah, it shows that you've um, well you, you've learnt the theoretical skills to uh, to run the business um, and really the business abilities, your your practical skills to do that. And, and um, attitude is obviously very important. Um, and ha yeah, how you present yourself as well, um, and how enthusiastic you are about it. So that's that side of it. Yeah, well, integrity. I guess that's a bit of a judgment call in, in um, experience and in, in how long you've been banking with your bank. Um, probably, people say, oh, well, um, you know, if you stick with one bank, you know, they know your background, etc. And, and that is true to a, to a certain extent, but. When you start getting into fairly big um, 
um, propositions, then it, yeah, you want to choose a bank that you, you've got a you've created a bit of a track record with. Um, but they also, um, you know, the the you know you want to get alongside a bank or a guy that the person put, that's going to be dealing with you that understands your business and you've got a you've created a bit of a connection there. So it's important that you you know you're choosing the bank as much as they're choosing you as well. Um, one other thing I would say about that is that, um, yeah, the, yeah, integrity. So they're, they're going to be doing credit checks, all that sort of stuff on you as well. You left. Um, so yeah, you know, if, if you've had something or something, you've had a missed a payment or something like that. You know, be upfront about it or explain or try and get it sorted so it gets off your record. Um, etc. So banks, you know, it's the first thing that they'll do. With your permission, you've you've got to sign an application form, but they will do a credit check as well. Which I've covered there. Um, yeah, well that role of partners, I guess that's, yeah, I guess I'm more saying if it's a husband and wife or you don't have to be married, but if you're a a partnership, or you might be two guys or two girls or whatever. But it, it, do you sort of make the decisions jointly, or does one sort of run it and the other one just is in the background and not really knowing what's going on? So because if if you're borrowing together, then you you're both equally liable for the debt. So it's important that that both both are actively involved. And in some cases, you know, and I guess it's been uh, fairly uh, traditional, but the the male sort of takes on the role of doing the um, Doing the outside physical stuff, and and the um, female in the partnership um, does the does the financial side of things, so um, or keeps the books um, is another way of looking at it. But it's good that that both and, and that's that can work really well. But it's good that both of them know basically from the financial point of view what's going on as well. Um, and decisive, yeah. Now, do you make decisions? Do you sort of wait for things to happen, or do you do you do you make things happen? Um, yeah, because you can't be too wishy-washy with things like this. You've sometimes you just got to make a decision and go with it, and see how it goes from there. So, from a, a banker's point of view, you've you know you often you'll um, you know it's first impressions are really important. Um, how, how you present yourself, and again, you know the things like the um, doing your own budgets, etc., rather than just relying on a on a consultant or an accountant to put them together gives you a lot more creds basically if, if you've actually made the effort and done it yourself and because it's showing that you've taken responsibility and ownership for it and I have to say a lot of accountants budgets that I've seen for Vita, for any business farming business you know a lot of them base you know cost you five four or five grand for them to put it together and, it, and it's basically um, thrown in the rubbish bin you know within a month or something like that so Having some sort of system where you're actually recording what you're actually doing each month as well, to compare that to budget is really important. So, you know, the likes of um, zero, one in, in in horticultural, one in pastoral farming that f most farmers use as cash manager. So having those sort of um, those sort of software packages are um, are quite important, and again show that you and would be fa looked looked on looked on favourably by the bank, but. Hey, you can set up your own spreadsheet and do it as well. Yeah, so we will put people there at the front, but but at the end of the day, it's got to stack up from a cash flow point of view. And this is quite a, uh, I quite like this quote. Um, this guy Peter Alexander is a um, quite a well-known and respected farm accountant down in the South Island, and he he's very good at coming out with these sort of one-liners. Um, and I just think that's, uh, yeah. So yeah, so what do we mean by cash flow? Yeah, well, basically, can you service the loan? And another way of thinking about your loan is, and when you're paying interest, is that you're paying, it's like paying rent, you're paying rent on the money. Um, and does the cash flow provide enough income for you to live? Um, and yeah, obviously, um, how what sort of falls at the bottom is how strong your business is, and if it is um, strong, does it provide other opportunities for you to maybe expand your business or to diversify your business or to put in um, put in um, I guess 
as an example, um, put in um, frost protection, um, you know, windmills, things like that, just to even make your business more um, resilient. So yeah, that's that's key really. And your business that you're doing, your proposition, basically, we're assuming you've got the capital, all, all the funding for the for the land. So you're just borrowing to do the development. So you're going to be a pretty um, strong business from from the start anyway. So it should stack up cash flow wise, but hey, it'll be interesting to see how it looks. Okay. So what what's important is um, and what banks look for, and in in your case, you, you know, in the scenario that we're we're setting up for you, you haven't got that track record because you're actually doing it from a development side, but. What the first thing any bank's going to ask you for is your is your financial statements that are prepared by your accountant. So, um, and what they're looking for is you know how you've gone in the past, and then how does your budgets stack up to that um, to to what you've actually done, and um, what you've got uh, to help you with that is obviously that um, data that we got from MPI. Have they? Found any other stuff from um, Great? What is it? The Great Growers Association? Um, or? I didn't know. Not as far as I'm aware. Yeah, yeah. It's in your sort of industry. It's probably real. I know on the pastoral side, and this particularly in the dairy side, they have all sorts of benchmarking tools that you can use. But again, I mean, no banks will be. You know, even if you can show, well, look, this is what the average is for the Hawks Bay, or this is this is what the monitoring report. Um, Shows and you and you have that alongside your figures is is really important. Uh, well, is important and yeah, it's just showing that you're not just making it up. You've um, applied some reasoning to it. Um, oh, a leopard doesn't change its spots. Yeah, I mean that, that's quite a classic that we see in um, when we look at financial statements and we actually see what the what people are drawing out of the business or what the the bank. I shouldn't say I'm no longer a banker, but what they look at is well, how much are you taking out. Of your business, and if if things aren't going very well, um, obviously, and your drawings are very high, um, obviously the thing is, well, hey, you've got to cut your drawings or your living expenses um, to make this budget work or to make it work. Well, experience tells us that's probably the hardest thing for anybody to change is to is to cut cut their cloth. Um, or, or to reduce their personal expenses. So I guess that that's why we sort of threw that comment in there. Um, some things are, um, yeah, it's very hard to, to get those down. And again, in the bank, you know, and so if you've historically drawn um, 100 grand a year for the last three years and you and you present a budget to the bank that shows that you're only going to draw 50, well, you know, the bank's going to look at that fairly, um, yeah, uh, cynically, I guess. Um, unless there's uh, a reason for it, and you can say, "Well, actually, we're gonna." My wife's actually gonna go out full time working, or my partner's gonna get a job, so that's gonna pay for a lot of our living costs, etc. Okay, so yeah, the proposal or the property, and I thought we might just, um, we'll, we'll actually do that at the end, actually. So quality of the property, scale and size. So. Um, Yeah, is it? Yeah, I mean that that's pretty. For you guys, you will, you know, um, at the end of the day, it's, it's not really going to. You know, so, what's your vineyard, Julian? Yours is about eight hectares. You're doing, is it? Right. How many hectares is your block? Six. Six. Yeah. And what about you, Dan? Um, Twelve. Twelve. Oh, you're going. You, you've uh, you've obviously come into a lot of money. Yes. Go <laughs> hey. Yeah. 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 As I say, um, we we were talking about there, and, and that's more the scale of a business. And and I guess my experience has more been in the um, in the pastoral side of things. But when what we mean by scale is um, for any business, you've got set fixed costs. And whether you're a hundred hectares or you're fifty hectares, they're still the same. You know, your vehicle, you still have to run a vehicle. You still have to run a motorbike. Okay, you've got to drive around a, a bigger area, etc. So your your running costs are going to be more. 
but um, even your insurances and things like that are much the same. So, so what we're saying there is that scale. Um, if you're too small a scale, then um, yeah, well, a lot of businesses they they lack scale, and and they then they just they actually don't make any money because their fixed costs are so high as a proportion of their income. Um, and I guess we uh, when I was banking, you know, we have a term saying for guys that they're in um, scale jail. Uh, and it's really hard to get out of that. So, so that's kind of important. Or if they are smaller scale, they're relying on other income. Um, they're working off the property, doing something else, which is fine as well. I mean, you, you include that in your budget. Okay, um, your production figures. So it's important to, again, when you're doing your yields, etc., and putting them in your budget, you've, you're basically supporting it and saying, well, this is. For this area, this is um, the production I've used is based off what um, what the guy is doing next door, or, or what the what the industry average is for for that um, well for the Natara Triangle or for the Gimlet Gravels or whatever. Um, yeah, if you can get all that production stuff, well, that's even better. Yeah, well, it, it's really saying that benchmarking that against what your production is compared to. To what the averages and what the top performers are doing. Yeah, financial figures. I guess I'll put that in there. Is that um, and often in farmers are notoriously bad for for not doing it. But in any other business in town or anything like that, the first thing anybody will do when they're looking at buying a business is say, "Can I have a look at your books?" Whereas in farming uh, and horticulture, to a certain degree, um, far, they they don't tend to sort of ask, a lot of them don't ask for that. I mean, you can, and you're within your rights to ask. Well, what, what, what's this block actually making in the past, and what is it? What is it? What's its cost of production? They're not asking to know what their debt levels are or the, to see their balance sheet, but they're just looking at that part of the financial statements that show what the income is and what the um, what the expenses are. And with a lot of banks, um, if you're borrowing off one bank and buying this block or whatever. There's a good chance that they've probably um, they've probably banked the the business beforehand, so they'll have a good idea. They're not that they're going to disclose that information to you, but they'll the bank themselves will have a good idea of, of what what actually you know that property can do. Yeah, condition. What we're saying is you know is it well maintained or is it run down? And and if it's run down, what contingencies? It's quite a word that that, that we use quite a bit. In banking, um, I'll just rub that off now. Just try another pen, actually. Right. Yes, a contingency, so. So, do you have to spend X amount of dollars to um, tidy, the, tidy the place up or? or um, get the water system working more or anything by getting it to work properly or etc so uh, we're going to go through a bit of how you lay out a proposal to a bank and that's one thing that, that, that you should have thought about in, in it and you might not have to spend anything but you might have to as well so you need to take that into account um, yeah, again and more for, for the pastoral side but what sort of fertiliser history has been on the property. Okay, SWAT, we talked about that the other day. Um, yeah, in your own mind, um, and I think John, you were talking about it in a previous life over in the UK, you'd do that sort of SWOT analysis on, on any sort of proposition or, or anything like that? Absolutely, especially when, and I was going to ask you the question, whether you've got a slide coming up, but one of the key things i found is the varieties that you if you're buying a property, what varieties are on there, or what varieties are you intending to plant? Yeah. Because today, the, you know, the, the whole question of whether or not you can finance this loan is dependent on your income, and the income is hugely dependent on the market. Yeah. For grapes. Yeah. And that is variety specific. Yeah. Yeah. And if they see that you're going to plant Nebbiolo or something, of which there's not a, a ready market here in New Zealand necessarily. Yeah. As compared to some of your Blanc or Merlot or yeah. more, I wouldn't say traditional, but where there is a ready market for a yeah. variety, then there's a huge difference. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And, and 
yeah, I don't know I'm only going to cover that in that slide, but we should be putting that in there. Yeah, put all production figures, but yeah, variety, variety mix of your block, and that's the same with a pit fruit orchard as well. Have they got sort of a whole lot of Granny Smiths or Red Delicious or or whatever? Have, have they kept up with what the market's demanding out there? How how closely would a rural manager look at the question of whether, in terms of quality of the property, that the property it sort of particularly are suitable for for growing grapes, for instance? I mean, you know, would they would they assume that? Well, no, they couldn't assume that for a, for a you know, a, a, um, for cropping land or for pastoral land. Trying to get away from that camera. <laughs> they, they would be looking at, they would want to see it for at least for all times and have a rough idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but depending on it, most rural bankers, at, well, they'd look at what's happening on next door. Okay, that and, 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 and they've got to, you know, the guys that you're dealing with are all tertiary qualified and they're all probably got valuation degrees, so they, they'd have a pretty good idea of the value of the blocks and, and, and that. But in specialised businesses, they'd still probably rely on a, on a valuation, so on actually paying and getting a valuation on the property. They would probably request a valuation that had looked in the soil report. Yeah, 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 so the valuation report, I don't know if you've seen one, but it covers yeah, the soils, um, fertiliser history, buildings and the level, you know, how well maintained they are, etc. So, um, but for the... For a block like this, they would, yeah, for what you're sort of telling me or what, what, what you're actually going to use in your project, yeah, I mean, that, they wouldn't require a specialist report. Um, but if it was a sort of a greenfields business or, or new variety that you were, um, you were setting up, then I guess they would be looking at it, they would be looking at it fairly closely and they perhaps would want you to get some sort of third party opinion on it, like from a consultant or a bit of cultural consultant or something like that. And, and that information, they would be looking for that clearly to be defined in the business plan? Yes, yeah, definitely, yep. Yep, but again, that they'll be looking at, and again, that's where the bank is, they've got all this knowledge of l previous lending and uh, of, of existing clients, etc. So they know, you know, they've got a lot of, hell of a lot of knowledge there and know what's, what's going to be a good, what's going